to remount and carry your bike. Now that we've worked on our dismounts, how are we going to get back onto the bike? You've probably seen remounting in the races, and needless to say, it's a skill that is important to get right. But before you remount, you'll probably need to carry your bike over an obstacle. We'll cover longer runs and shouldering your bike in a later video, but if you're carrying over hurdles or up a short set of steps, here are a few pointers. It's best to lift your bike rather than swing it. If you use your momentum to carry your bike at an angle, you'll likely put it down at an angle and you could risk bouncing your chain off. Lifting the bike straight up takes a conscious effort, but it is worth it. Ensure that you lift the bike high enough to clear the obstacles, but not too high that it affects your running. And if you're running between two barriers, keep the bike in the air between them. Now that you've cleared your obstacle, it's time to get back on. Firstly, you need to make sure that you're getting back onto your bike in the right place. On a flat stretch of grass after some hurdles, you'll need to remount as soon as you can to get back up to speed. If, however, a set of steps gives way to a muddy incline, it might be better to run all the way to the top first, as getting on when you're going too slow can mean that you stall, or worse still, have to get back on again. Make a judgement based on your experience and also what other people around you are doing. It's sometimes much easier to do the same as everyone else. So now we're in the right place, you need both hands on the bars, either on the hoods or the tops. We'll get back on the bike from the non-drive side of the bike. If however you got on the opposite side, just reverse these instructions. Jump from your left foot, simultaneously swinging your right leg over the back of the bike and over the saddle. You want to aim to land at the very top of your thigh. Jump any further and you risk landing somewhere deeply uncomfortable. Don't jump high, you want it to be more of a slide. The movement you're aiming for feels like you're jumping forward as well as across. Only jump as high as you need to clear the saddle, any more and landing becomes painful. When you've landed, your momentum should mean that you can slide across a little further until you're centred in your saddle. Your pedals are likely to be in the same position as they were when you got off, so with the left hand pedal in the 6 o'clock position. This means, obviously, that your right pedal is at the top of the stroke, so locate this with your foot first. Push the pedal down and then reach for your left pedal as it comes up to meet your foot. To get this last bit dialed take some practice, but don't be afraid to spend time working specifically on this. It's not a skill that comes naturally, but a smooth dismount and remount can save you precious seconds over the course of a race. When you're out training on your cross bike, do some specific drills to work on it. A great way of doing this is to never get on a stationary cross bike when you're out practicing. Just put in a couple of steps and hop back on to get that feeling of preserving momentum. Pro tip, many pros can dismount on either side of their bike. They'll still have a favoured side, but this gives them the option to hop back on or dismount on their wrong side in case of a crash or hiccup. Don't try this until you have your favoured side dialed though. It's more varied than muddy fields, and the length of the season means that conditions can vary wildly from 25 degrees and sunny in September potentially below freezing from December onwards. 